Changing world, Life Changes Network presents a voice of truth and inspiration, broadcasting on the frequencies of love, laughter, and understanding, illuminating new paths for new directions, and on a mission to inspire humanity in embracing and engaging the changes going on in ourselves, in our lives, and in our world. As we, as one, strive for higher and higher planes of existence, always remembering life changes. This is radio like you've never felt before. Life changes. And now, your host, our MC, our master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Ciao, everyone. And thank you, Mark, for that introduction. You know, it's great to have you here live. I like it so much better than the canned voice. And it just seems that every time you do it live, it's just a little different. There's, there's, the, the, the emphasis is always there. Life changes. Life changes. And sometimes it's life changes or something. It's just uh, funny to me. So... I'm excited about our guest uh, today, who's going to be Dr. Eric Pearl, who is a world-leading authority on energy healing and beyond. He has done a lot of things, and I'll tell you more about it in just a little bit, but the last time we were together and I interviewed him live at our Life Changes live event, we started cracking each other up on stage, and the audience at first didn't know what was going on. He at first didn't know what was going on, but I was just being me. And the next thing you know, we were having fun, and then the audience got into it, and it just it just escalated from there. So it was a lot of fun. So I'm expecting we're going to have a lot of fun today. And speaking of a lot of fun, I love this show, and I love that we're doing it, and we're having more and more fun, and more and more people are getting into it and having fun with us. And, you know, a really nice friend of mine he's a nice guy he's a he's a great guy everybody loves him he's always doing good for everybody and and uh, just just the nicest guy you ever want to meet and always trying to help people and i'm i'm just telling you you know nice guy a great guy um helpful guy i would say very spiritual guy said to me recently uh this week actually said you know filippo this whole talk about the shift thing and consciousness raising and stuff like that, I don't know if I'm going to make it. You know, if really stuff's going to happen for 2012 and if really the world's going to separate into two dimensions or he just went on about the different things that that he's been learning from our show and on his own and from other people talking and he says, maybe I'm just not going to make it. Maybe I'm I'm not cut out for that. Maybe I'm one of the people that's going to be left behind. And that's one of the reasons why I'm really excited about this show, because this show is so not about leaving anybody behind. The show is for everybody, and and this show is for those who get it or don't get it, and or and or don't get it. It's not, and it's it's not about what you have to do or exactly how you have to do it. It's so much more about we each have the answers, and the more we connect, the more we know what's what's right because it's as we've been saying amongst ourselves at the team here life changes we don't need another hero we we each need to be who we are and then we'll have all the heroes we need we, we'll be our own hero and and we, we'll help ourselves and in so doing help each other so i said to this friend of mine why do you of all people think that you're not going to quote unquote make it ascend or, or or whatever it is that's going to happen, why do you think you're going to be one of the ones left behind? He says, you know, I don't know, I, I don't do yoga, and I don't do, you know, this energy healing work like these people over here do, and I don't do the chanting thing like these people over there do, and I don't do this, and I don't do that, and 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 I wanted to say to him, and I did, it's like, but what you do do is so much more real, so much more connected, so much more honest and spiritual, quote-unquote, 
then a lot of people that I know that do do yoga and do do some of these other things without putting anybody down, but just because we do some of these exercises, so to speak, doesn't make us more spiritual than other people. And also, you don't have to know how to do those those movements, those sounds, those exercises in order to be spiritual or, or in order to be the best you could be or in order to be helping the planet uh, or the, the raising of the consciousness. And I told him that I had met several indigenous people and I had seen movies of indigenous people, of course, so there are a lot of them out there. And I said, you know, you see some of these people and they're the most beautiful people you'd ever want to meet and they're just all hearts and all they want to do is feed you in more ways than one show you love and give you food and 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 show you comfort even in in their modest surroundings sometimes and i i think they're some of the most spiritual people in the world i think they're some of the most connected people in the world if anybody is going to make a shift should there be one it's going to be them. If anybody's going to transcend, it's going to be them first. And I could bet you money, all kinds of money, most of them have never even heard of yoga. And if they have, they don't do it or don't know how and can't pe- keep an, an asana position for very long. And most of them don't chant in in the Indian way, unless they're Indian, or don't chant in the in the Hin, uh, in in the American Indian, or you know, or, or Japanese, or Chinese, or Tibetan way, unless that's what they are, they might. But it's not about that. Those things are tools, and aren't we glad we have them for when we need them? And right now, some of us, including myself, are in need of some of these tools to help us get past this this illusion of not knowing, this illusion of being disconnected from all that is. And definitely, definitely, this illusion of us not being uh, exactly who we're supposed to be in this moment to help us make either a shift or even if there wasn't a shift, to be the best us that we could be at this moment. And so I said all this to my friend, and I hope he got it. And I'm so glad he asked the question or or mentioned his concern because it's a concern that I've had in the past. It's a concern that a lot of people have. And interestingly enough, and not coincidentally, our guest tonight helps alleviate a lot of those concerns around healing as well. And so we'll get to talk to him in just a moment about how he does it in his work and how he's spreading his his work and knowledge all around the world. So with that, I want to remind everybody that you are listening to Life Changes with Filippo, and I am your host, Filippo Voltaggio, and so happy to be of service here every Monday night on the BBS Radio Network at 7 p.m. Of course, you can learn more about us by going to www.lifechanges.ws, where you can not only hear the show live, but you could also hear us in, in the archives for free and hear every guest and luminary we have had since we first started our show over a year and a half ago, and growing. So with that, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about our guest. Again, he is Eric Pearl and one of the leading authorities on energy healing and beyond. He is a well-renowned healer and an internationally best-selling author. His book is The Reconnection, Heal Others, Heal Yourself, which has been translated in over 36 languages. He has appeared on national and international television. He has spoken at the United Nations. He has presented at Madison Square Garden and been interviewed in the New York Times and recently featured in the film The Living Matrix. One day, his patients thought they felt his hands on him, on them. And even though he hadn't physically touched them, they felt them. So, That started this whole chain of events. Many experienced extraordinary healings from serious diseases and lifelong ailments. Eric and the Reconnection present reconnective healings at hospitals and universities worldwide and major scientific research programs. Studying the work are progressing 
with impressive results. Having taught more than 60,000 people in over 60 countries, he and the Reconnection are reconnecting a spontaneous new generation of healers worldwide. He has come here. Uh, just he has come back to Los Angeles after being in India, and he is here because this week starts uh, the essence of healing. His number one and number two workshop uh, starts on Friday, the 1st of October at the Universal Hilton in the Universal City. And then the week after that is the Mastery Conference, October 8th through the 10th, also here in Los Angeles. So we are happy to have Dr. Eric Pearl with us tonight. Hey, well, thanks for having me on the show. You know, I, I got I, I was picked up at the airport. My driver warned me. He said, well, I, I bet you don't know we're having an Indian summer. I said, I just came from the Indian summer, so it's okay. <laughs> it's hot here, isn't it? Wow. You, you sound really good for having jet lag, jet lag and uh, having just gotten back. And we appreciate you being on the show. We know you have had a busy uh, period of time here, and you're going to be really busy this weekend. Um, it's exciting what you do, is it not? I have a wonderful time. It's absolutely terrific when we, um, it's, it's scheduling can be rather tight. Um, and apparently the people in India that we were dealing with decided that schedule times were merely suggestions. In other <laughs> words, so after flying all the way to India, which is not a short flight, I think it's, 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 um, it's a sixteen and a half hour flight, and then mm-hmm. there's a, a couple hour, a few hour layover, and then another three hour flight, and arriving somewhere around three in the morning, getting through customs and everything, the airport. A couple hours later, they told me that they wanted me to be teaching a class of students two and a half hours following that. Oh, very exciting! But the children were all part of what they call a charity school. You know, these are people from the slums who had, you know, very little money. Their their slums make our slums not look like slums. Mm. The children, it was so exciting mm. to see their faces because they, they were so thrilled to come in and learn how to do reconnective healing. It, you know, it was a treat for them to have someone in the school, of course, and then they they all they all wear these cute little school uniforms. <laughs> and they would smile and they would beam. We brought massage tables so uh, that they could have someone lie down on the table and they could learn how to feel these healing frequencies with their hands. And, and the students and the adults, both their bodies went into involuntary movements and shaking and other other kind of processes that go on with reconnective healing as these children were doing it. It was amazing. So, you know, I was I really didn't mind giving up that first night's sleep. We oh. were at several different schools when we were there before we finally gave the seminar at the weekend. And they and they get it. Well, children get it more easily than adults because children don't buy into the fears, lacks and limitations that um we place ourselves in. I mean, the truth is that healing comes from love, oneness, unity, prosperity, light, and abundance. And yet, somewhere along the lines, as um, adults, we seem to have been following teachers and techniques that have instead chosen to fill us with fear, lack, limitation, separation, the illusion of darkness. Um, And so what happens is children run in and they simply follow the, the the music of their lives, their instinct, you know. Mm-hmm. Just like just like if you fill a, t- a room full with toys and you release children, the child runs and plays with the first toy that catches his or her attention until the mm-hmm. second one does. They don't stop and wave a pendulum over it or muscle test to see if they've got permission from their guides or try to psychically pretend that they're medical intuitives or medical in toy intuitives. Um, and as adults, we do all that. So the children learn this very quickly. You can teach a, a, ch- a whole seminar for children inside of two or, or three hours. As long mm-hmm. as as adults, none of them are running in, ruining them, trying to say, "Now shake off the negative energy and protect yourself first. You know, we 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 view children as if they're born onto the planet, just as empty vessels here, just for us to fill. And maybe it's time we review that thinking maybe it's time 
we do recognize that they're placed here as empty vessels, but maybe they're placed here as empty vessels to remind us how to become empty vessels once again. You know, yes, so maybe we all started out as empty vessels, but we were taught how to be civilized. And now there's this thing happening that sounds like a shift or something. So we look to the teachers and 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 are looking for them to teach us. And some of them are teaching us, well, you have to swing something this way before you know it's right. And you have to touch this rock a certain way or put it on your forehead or wear it this way and all of that. And so we are looking at that. And, and that's one of the beauties of what you teach. You have a very humorous way, as, as a matter of fact, of saying, stop it. <laughs> stop all that. It, it, stop it. Just stop, stop it that. now. <laughs> um, it's like this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't attribute this particular part of the weakness to civilization so much as I would attribute it to fears that, that also permeate, you know, that permeate all societies. Our teachers today, well, let's look at it this way. Our energy healing techniques are wonderful. They're like energy, they're like training wheels on a bicycle. I mean, if you have very small, a very small child who wants to climb up under a very big bicycle, you've got very few things more valuable to you at that moment in time than a good set mm -hmm. of training wheels. They, they help your child begin to master and, and discover and master his or her sense of balance on the bicycle, and yet then once they do master the bicycle with training wheels, what do we do as adults? We remove the training wheels because without that, we realize that child will never master the bicycle itself. Of course, if we weren't around, we might see our child, you know, see, well, they'll start to say, well, the training wheels have helped me. I'm not falling down as much, but I'm not riding really well. And they'll go to the nearest authority who most likely will be the bicycle store owner who will be more than thrilled to take their money and sell your child a second set of training wheels. Here, mm. buy the 24 karat gold set, or here, um, come back next week, my guides tell me that I'll be permitted to sell you the set that makes little beeping sounds as you tip and tilt. <laughs> and, you know, if you're especially good, I'll sell the extra super-duper set that shoots out infrared light beams, and you can buy the super night glasses for only an extra $150 so you can see at night, because not everyone can see at night, but once you learn this work with this special gift I sell you, you'll be able to do it too. And one time, you're going to look out the window, and there's, your kid's going to be riding down the street in a bicycle with 24 sets of wheels and silly-looking glasses and tipping and tilting and beeping and wearing all of the quite the wheels in the appropriate shocker colors at the right time of the day <laughs> facing north, south, east, or west, followed by two or three dozen of his or her friends who he's all taught to master these various training wheels. And they've all mastered the bicycle with training wheels, but none of them have mastered the bike, the bicycle mm -hmm. itself, and none of them will until the training wheels come off. And if we can understand this, then the next thing for us to understand is the consciousness that our energy healing techniques are doing these very same things with us. They are functioning as training wheels. And so we master, you know, technique number one that allows um, us to bring in the energies through a Japanese symbol. And then that helps us step that much closer to being a healer and each time we do that we step halfway closer so we get frustrated like the child on the bicycle and we take another want to take another step so we have the super duper technique where you bring in 20 percent of the energies from the heavens and 80 percent from the earth and move them in a clockwise circle and we step halfway closer <laughs> and we look for the next one where we shake the energy off and breathe it into a count of four and blow it out to a count of eight <laughs> shake it off squeeze it off cough it off pretend to zip up our energy fields like little zippers so that people, beings, and frequencies don't creep in and attack us or make us fat. There's actually a technique out there we're telling you to zip up so you're protected and you don't get fat. People pay money to learn this. And, you know, what we do is we get closer and closer and closer with all of these things, but and we master all of our energy healing techniques, but we never master energy healing itself, just like the bicycle, until we take the training wheels off and for some reason our energy healing teachers today are thrilled to tell us to come back and learn more come back and learn more write me another check my husband will be thrilled to deposit it and you too can come back and learn more 
And yet, the masters, if we listen throughout the ages, have always explained to us, the first thing is that is don't come back. Because they told us that they weren't teaching us in the first place, that they're simply, we're simply allowing ourselves to learn and access mastering the silence mm. of our own minds. The teachers say, come back each year and you can learn the new set. My guides tell me you can learn the new set. And the masters say, don't come back. I need that seat. I need that chair because there'll always be the new student as long as there's truth to be taught. And, and our teachers today, for some reason, seem to either not know this or not want us to know this. It's really one of the two. Mm. Because they keep telling us to return and learn the next technique, and yet the masters say the true gift of the technique comes not in learning more. It comes in transcending the technique itself. And, you know, either the teachers don't know this if they don't want us to, but whatever the case is, we can't really sit around and wait much longer. I guess you can if you want to, but I, I don't choose to, and I think most of us are choosing not to. It's time for us to become the healers. It's time for us to become the teachers of the teachers. It's time for us to become the light that next lights the next light. And when you see a candle, when you take a lit candle to light another candle to light another candle, do you ever see that flame doing a technique? Of course not. It's not worrying about turning itself clockwise instead of counterclockwise, and it realizes that if it sprays itself down with alcohol, it's going to extinguish its own light, and we need to learn that too. We simply see that candle standing in its own truth, integrity, wonder, splendor, the essence and beauty of being who and what it is. And by doing so, it simply inspires the next flame to ignite and the next and the next. It doesn't become weakened. It doesn't need protection. It actually glows more hmm. brightly as it inspires each flame. And you can hear another word, another meaning of the word inspire. You can hear is the breathing in, the breathing in of life. And it's time for us to stop trying to do the healings, to rise above the techniques, and instead allow ourselves to become the light that we truly are, to become the healing, and in doing so, to stand in our integrity without ritual, without fear, without protections, without added pieces of jewelry and pendants and crystal-color bands to go to all the right chakras at all the right times, and instead become that light, become that truth, and inspire the healing and light within each and every one of us with whom we come into contact. Hmm. Not that I have an opinion on the subject or anything. <laughs> no, really, what do you think? <laughs> I'll tell you later. What? <laughs> there's... there's a... There are two phrases that you use. One is reconnecting, and one is the reconnection. And I know that they are distinct. And so, there's how, how healing, you... and there's the reconnection. It's not something usually that I that I would get into on an interview because although it's it's simple, it needs to be explained many different ways until it something clicks differently in people. But I'll try to do it in brief overview form. The reconnection is the overall experience change that has come through. The whole process is, the whole process, which is not a process, is the reconnection. And in it, there are two ways that you can approach having experiences or sessions with people. One is reconnective healing, learning about how to bring about the portion of this that we call the healing aspect, which, of course, allows us and, and requires us, because of the intensity of this healing, to have some level facilitated within us during the process of reconnecting with who and what we are, our original fullness as human beings. If you go to a practitioner who's learned how to do the process called the reconnection, then the goal of that, the focus of that is to reconnect with our original fullness of, of spirit as we are in the planet as we go through our physical life experience, you could say. Uh, what it will do is it will tend to throw you onto your life course 
rather rapidly, often more rapidly than you might even have anticipated or had time to throw in your buckle up your seatbelts for. <laughs> and yet a level of healing comes along with that. Um, I guess I guess the best way to explain it is to give you a brief background. As um, I, I practice as a doctor, I was a doctor of chiropractic. I still am by license. But when I was practicing, in my 12th year in practice, at one point in time, a few strange things happened. Uh, I was awakened in the middle of the night by a bright light that came bursting through my eyes. I opened my eyes to see what it was. It wasn't anything seemingly spiritual or metaphysical or outrageously unusual. It was just the lamp next to my bed. It had turned itself on. Now, I had had that lamp for a good 10 years, it hadn't selected any other propitious occasion to self-ignite, but there it was, and I figured it was something electrical, like uh, a short, except shorts usually turn things off, so it was was so long, I don't know, but uh, something electrical. At the same time, though, what really got my attention was, I clearly had the sense that somebody was in my home, and I am not prone to waking up and feeling the sense of people in my home when I had just gone to sleep and no one was there. So I got up rather bravely with a knife and a can of pepper spray and my Doberman pincher, <laughs> and we went looking through the house, through corners and around corners and hallways, and I couldn't find anyone. And I finally talked myself into thinking that it must have been my imagination and to go back to sleep, which I did. But that Monday... When I went into my office, seven of my patients, independent of one another, told me that they felt people standing, walking, running, and two of them actually said it felt like as if someone was flying around the ceiling, walking and running and flying around the room. I just, you know, no one, no one. In, in your office that at that before. moment with you, right? In my office. My patients right. were telling me that that's what they felt in the room. Right. No one had ever said that to me before in 12 years of practice, so you would think seven patients in one day, that would have gotten my attention. But other patients were saying, I can feel your hands before you touch me. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, sure, you can. Close your eyes. So they close their eyes. I hold my hands in different directions, and they tell me, even if I were a foot away or a yard away, or right shoulder, left ankle. So as I played that game, my palm blistered a few times. Other stranger things occurred. And the next thing we know is people, their bodies start going to involuntary motions, eyes rapidly darting back and forth, involuntary finger and foot movement, tiny little movements in, in the face and, and, and neck and uh, that you could not move intentionally. And they're getting up, out, uh, getting up after their sessions and they're, they're, they're having healings, real, real healings. They're, they're getting up out of wheelchairs and vision and hearing is returning and they're showing me documents and reporting that their cancers have vanished and I'm getting calls from parents of the children or, and from the doctors of children with cerebral palsy or epilepsy that they're able to walk and run and play again and speak normally and they're not having seizures. Not all of them, but a lot of them, enough so that we knew that something significant was occurring and the doctors were saying, what did you do? And I said, I didn't do anything and don't tell anyone, which went over just about as big as <laughs> government saying no to drugs. So soon everyone started coming in going, I'll have what she had. And the next thing we know, people started asking to teach this. And I said, teach it? You've got to be crazy. How the heck do I teach this? I'm standing there looking like an idiot, waving my hands in the air. You want me to teach it? Go outside, wave your hands in the air, and look like a fool. Let me know what happens. (laughs) But more and more people started calling me saying, when I got home, I drove up in front of the house and the garage door opened before I hit the automatic opener button and I walked in and the TV or, or the lamp started turning itself off and on and I felt sensations in my hands. So I held my hands by someone in my family and suddenly my uncle could walk again or my grandmother regained her speech after the stroke. Or We began nice. to find that once we interact with this, what science calls a new spectrum of healing with science calls the reconnective healing spectrum, we are able to access and bring about for others a new level of healing that the researchers seem to feel has not been here on the planet before, is something that we're able to access for the very first time. And all of what this seems to do, besides turning the laws of physics inside out and upside down, is the changes that go on in people's lives once we interact with this indicate quite clearly that it's a new level of evolution for humankind that we're stepping into. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's not just 
something old. It's not an energy healing technique, they've explained. It's a whole genre of evolution, and just one portion of this genre, genre are the healing, the visible healings that we see, and just one portion of the healings are from the energy healing that we've had here before, but this takes us beyond Ricky, Jirage, and Shin, Shigong, Mahjong, Beijing, EFG, XYZ, Alpha, Beta, Delta, and all the little energy healing techniques into a spectrum of healing and evolution comprised of energy, light, and information, levels of energy, light, and information that science hasn't seen on the planet before. In, in, in case some, in case you actually did confuse some people, mahjong is is not an energy healing technique. Or oh, those, I suppose, <laughs> if you played it right, maybe you get something out of it. I don't know, but um, I love it when you go into that, Eric. Um, you know, one of the things I I so appreciate besides the story and the work that you do, but that that neither is Beijing, by the way. Beijing, yeah, that's right. I, I you were going so fast, I didn't catch all of them, but. Um, one of the things that I so appreciate about you is that is that you reference science, but even more importantly, that science references you. And so we'll talk about that in, in just a moment when we come back. We're talking to Dr. Eric Pearl, who is an internationally recognized healer uh, who has spoken all over the world. And one of the things that I also like about him is that he has spoken at the UN. Uh, people are listening and scientists are listening. So we want to learn more about What's that about? And what are they, what are they hearing? And if they're hearing it, maybe we should as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can hear more of this, uh, by going to one of the, uh, events that, uh, Dr. Eric Pearl has. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's going to be here in Los Angeles at the Universal City Hilton on October 1st and 2nd doing the Essence of Healing 1 and 2 and then between October 8th and 10th with a group of scientists and luminaries in the field doing a mastery conference again at the Universal Hilton in Los Angeles and I myself am looking forward to doing a face-to-face -face interview with him uh, on the 2nd of October just after uh, the uh, conference is finishes uh, on Saturday night. So you're all invited to that as well. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's free. Uh, Dr. Eric Pearl has a book out called The Reconnection, Heal Others, Heal, Your Heal Yourself, and a DVD called The Living Matrix, in which he is one of the main protagonists. It's a film of the new science of healing. Of course, you're listening to Filippo Voltaggio on the BBS Radio Network. You can learn more about us and hear us live or hear our archive shows at www.lifechanges.ws. We are excited and happy to be of service by presenting all these great luminaries to you. If you have somebody that you think should be on the show, if you have experiences that you want to share with us, you can always stay in touch with us via our website, but of course through YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook. We have our own Facebook pages and our own Facebook fan page as well called Life Changes with Filippo. So now back with our guest, Dr. Eric Pearl. You... Eric, have scientists at one time who have even followed you around to try and measure some of what you do, and they have actually come up with scientific proof or at least measurements uh, to, to be able to say that, yeah, something is indeed going on. This is not just speculation here. Tell us more about well, there, that. There, yeah, there, there, there are many studies by world-renowned researchers on Dr. William Tiller, who's a professor emeritus from Stanford University, who's known for the Tiller-Einstein model of negative entropy and all these fancy-sounding things, and he's, he's published maybe 350 papers and multiple books. He has researched what goes on in the seminars by himself and also because he couldn't believe his own findings the first few times. So a second um, handful of times, I think a total of six or seven times, he with some other world-renowned researchers such as Konstantin Karatkov from University of St. Petersburg, Russia, um, Gary Schwartz from the University of Arizona, Arizona and others, they have discovered something quite shocking, or to, or to quote Dr. Tiller, in the scientific world is huge. When we do energy healing techniques, the ones that we've had up until now, excluding Mahjong, of course, that you made that <laughs> And Beijing, yes. Uh, and Beijing, <laughs> yes. Um, what we are able to do is somehow change the energy. Certain something is 
produced in the air, which in science some people refer to as excess free thermodynamic energy. It sounds complicated. It's really simple. Excess means more than what's normal. Free means floating around freely. Thermodynamic means temperature related. So excess free thermodynamic temperature related energy is released in an energy healing technique. Mm. But when we do, when you learn how to do reconnective healing, what is released in the room. And if you're at this seminar uh, where we're teaching you how to do this, um, October 1, 2, and 3 that you mentioned at the Hilton, it's, it's Saturday, it's Friday night, Saturday and Sunday. Filippo is October 1st from 7 to 10 and, and, and third, 2nd and right. 3rd. Saturday and Sunday are all day for learning. When what happens, the measurements in the room, and Dr. Tiller and some other researchers will be there again. He said the only way you can produce that amount, that level of excess free thermodynamic energy would be if the temperature of the room were heated to, get this, over 300 degrees centigrade. Wow. Something changes with reconnective healing that changes physics in a way that they can't even fathom yet how to understand. It changes our DNA. I believe there's been four studies so far independently where it's shown that if you damage DNA, it allows it to heal more rapidly and cleanly than anything else that they've seen so far. And the difference also is that it seems to heal um, weaknesses, um, the problems that have been inherent in the DNA even before the damage. So the DNA, as we know, emits levels of light today. It's not just a spiritual concept today that we know that DNA emits levels of light. And it seems to bring us back to an optimal level of light where anything denser or heavier than that light, which includes most health challenges, has pretty much nothing left to hold on to. So as appropriate for the person with whom you're interacting, those densities, those health challenges, often fall away fairly instantaneously, fairly dramatically, fairly miraculously. As a matter of fact, the reason, one reason for all the interest in science and reconnective healing is that once you learn how to do these, the healings that you bring about tend to be fairly instantaneous and tend to last for the lifetime of Mm -hmm. that person without needing to come back again and again and again and do session after session or level after level. But there are two things that that you mentioned in one sentence, so I want to separate them for clarity for the people coming. There is the seminar, and there is the once-a-year conference. Now, once a year in Los Angeles, we give a seminar teaching people how to do reconnective healing, and that's what's happening Friday night the 1st and all day Saturday and Sunday. So to tell people pretty much what you can expect there, what happens on the Friday night is we give a three-hour presentation where we talk about the history, the theory, how this work appeared on the planet, and a lot of the science behind it. We also bring up volunteers from the audience, one or more volunteers from the audience, to give live demonstrations of the healing so you can see the reality in front of your eyes. And we give everyone an opportunity there if they choose to feel it in your hands. But Saturday and Sunday, October 2nd and 3rd, is a different story. It's a real working learning seminar. So do not come hear that again do not come if you think we're all going to sit around hold hands ohm stamp our feet you know, and throw <laughs> flowers in the air it's not going to happen that way this really is my personality um, <laughs> just back from india or not and i don't get prettier what happens is there's a stage in the center of the room there are stairs there are stairs there are chairs on one side and massage tables on the other. So we're in our chairs, we demonstrate a level of the work, we talk about it, we then go to the massage tables in groups of either two or four, because there's one massage table for every four people. And I will walk around to each table, and so will our international team of teaching assistants, and we will take your hand and we'll show you. Change the angle of your hand just for a moment, and notice and feel what you feel over here, and you'll begin to... to detect something. Now watch how it affects the person on the table and you'll start to see a part of their body go into involuntary movements. Mm. You know, let's glide your hand over here until you detect something else. Refine that sensation in. And suddenly you'll see the person on the table, their body movements will begin to change and you'll do this in two or three different ways and you'll begin to correlate that it's just like if you push an object north, it goes north and you push it south, it goes south. And after you do that a couple of times, you pretty much own the consciousness of pushing something or pulling something. 
Uh-huh. And we'll go back to the tables. We'll talk about what we just did, demonstrate the next level, and then go back to the massage tables again and actually do the work and walk around with you at each table. And by the end of that weekend, I can pretty much make you two promises that by the end of October 3rd, this Sunday, you should be able to do pretty much two things. A, you'll be able to facilitate any and every level of healing, I believe, that I can, if not as well, but even better. And B, you Hmm. will be able to facilitate any level of healing that any human being on this planet can do, no matter what the story is surrounding them, whether they were raised by monks in a cave in a mountaintop in Tibet and fed individual grains of seed, each one flown up in the back of its own Pak Lama, or whether they changed their name to Of God and moved to a church in Brazil. It doesn't matter the story. It only matters our willingness to transcend the story because the true gift of healing at this level is that this allows us to demystify the healing process. The challenge is to the ego as to whether or not we're willing to allow it to be demystified. The gift of this level of work is that it allows us to completely transcend, let go of, kiss, bless, thank, but let go of our energy healing techniques, any, each, and all of them, and in return to facilitate something much greater, more instantaneous, dramatic, and comprehensive. But the challenge, again, is always and only to our ego, is whether or not we're willing to transcend the techniques. And if we're not willing to transcend our techniques so we can bring about get greater gifts for others, we need to ask ourselves why. And if we're not mm. willing to allow the healing process to become clear and demystified and transparent for everyone, we need to ask ourselves why. And if we're not willing to ask ourselves why, then we're left with the true, honest question of we really need to ask ourselves why. We're not willing to ask ourselves why because therein lies our answer to accessing true mastery in the world of healing. Mm. It, it reminds me of when I used to study classical singing, opera, and all of that, and, and acting, and different kind of arts, uh, painting, etc. The, the teacher, the good teachers would always say, after you've learned the technique, throw it all away, don't don't uh, don't even focus on that when you're on that stage or when you're getting ready to paint on that canvas, whatever whatever it is, just connect and whatever comes through you, that's what you do. Those those tools uh, only go so far, like the training wheels that you you've been saying. And actually, and, and as I mentioned earlier, and you mentioned as well, there is science behind that. And I, being a, an engineer, uh, I have training in engineering and and studies am very much fascinated by both sides of it the 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 woo woo magic side that oh wow this is working and the 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 science that actually corroborates everything that you're saying here and so next week we're so fascinated by this we're going to have William Tiller which you mentioned uh, uh or whom you mentioned and also Doug DeVito on the show who are going to talk more about the science of this healing that we're talking about here. And I, I, you have fans all over, of course, the world I know. And it's interesting how just in this week alone, maybe the energy of the fact that you were coming back in town, I've, I've come across several of them who unsolicited have been talking about your work. And interestingly enough, I just got a text just now from a fan of yours and a friend of ours, uh, uh, Ken Sheets, who told us that he is broadcasting this very interview right now over our Facebook page um, through his Buzz Bros uh, website connection. So I want to thank him and uh, wow, thank sure. you, Eric, for inspiring that kind of behavior in people. <laughs> I'm glad you can also, you know, reach these people to become, you know, a catalyst for this communication because it's that's what it's about, that we are catalysts for communication, and we need to hear it through different voices. I mean, my book is called The Reconnection, Heal Others, Heal Yourself. All the information, of course, is on the website by the same name, thereconnection.com. And we do these seminars 45 weeks a year. I teach these seminars. We've trained over 70,000 people around the world. As you mentioned, we've been at the United Nations. We present at hospitals and universities, programs where we're teaching doctors all around the globe. But The following week after the seminar, October 1, 2, and 3, that following weekend, October 8, 9, and 10, is our annual U.S. Mastery Conference on Healing Science and Consciousness. And if you're 
you're coming there, you will get to hear such luminaries in the science world as Dr. Bruce Lipton, Dr. Joe Dispenza, John Holland, Daniel Brinkley, and his wife Catherine speaking about life after death. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, um, Dr. William Tiller with his research, Raymond Moody, who's also been one of the pioneers in life after death. Terry Cole Whitaker will be speaking there. Doug DeVito, of course, on science. Again, Terry Cole Whitaker on prosperity, your divine right, so we can break out of the poverty consciousness that so many people in healing are in and recognize that to bring about healing, we have to enter into a state of abundance for ourselves, too. It, you know, Bruce Lipton is, is very well known for the different books that he's written, uh, including Biology of Belief and Joe Dispenza as well. So this is an important concept. We only do it twice a year, once in the U.S., and this year we'll also be doing it from your part of the world, from uh, Riccioni in Italy in November. Yes, exciting. Well, my parents' part, but I'm very close to it as well. You know, I am uh, actually looking forward to actually getting to see you and getting to interview you again in person in front of a live audience on October 2nd, right in the middle of your of your conference. Seminar, uh, right. That'll be seminar, at the end right. of the Saturday seminar. Right, and so I'm looking forward to that and asking... Uh, getting to ask more questions and hear more of your your great answers, funny answers, and poignant answers. Um, but we just don't have uh, as much time as I would like here on the radio show. And unfortunately, we have just a couple more minutes left. And I want to make sure that we've covered everything that you could possibly share with us today. What else would you like to add, Eric, uh, in the last two minutes remaining? I think the main point always comes down to the fact that we have to stop looking outside of ourselves for the answers. We have to stop viewing it as thinking that we're going to become more by adding something in, whether it's the pendant that's supposed to bring in frequencies from the Pleiades or from Sirius, telling us that we're not 100%, we need to add an object and, of course, pay someone for the privilege, or whether it's the protective necklace we wear to keep away entities from the subways or the protection, protective procedures we use to zip ourselves up with or shake ourselves or spray ourselves off with, that all of these things keep us in a consciousness of fear, lack, and limitation. But to truly access mastery, we have to accept these fears, acknowledge them, kiss them, bless them, love them, pick them up, cradle them, and carry them with us one step at a time in the light, love, beauty, oneness, prosperity, and abundance, because healing resides in love, prosperity, and abundance. We cannot give a gift. We're unwilling to accept or receive ourselves. We mm-hmm. cannot stand in fear, lack, and limitation and facilitate healings for others until we first step into that consciousness ourselves and by reconnecting to, the, to our original fullness to the degree we are willing and able to transcend our energy healing techniques, we will be able to bring about this new level of healing, this new level of evolution, not only for ourselves, but to the degree we accept it ourselves, will be proportionate to the degree we can bring it about for the entire planet. I like it, I like it. And as a matter of fact, we haven't mentioned the website yet where you could learn more about Dr. Eric Pearl, more about the reconnection, more about reconnective healing, the DVD, the book, Mahjong, Buddhism, uh, uh, Beijing, and everything else. <laughs> no, not Mahjong and Beijing. But you can go to thereconnection.com. And reconnection, of course, is R-E-C-O-N-N-E-C-T-I-O-N. That's thereconnection.com and remember you can get to see Dr. Eric Pearl uh, in a rare performance once a, a year here in Los Angeles coming up this coming weekend and the weekend afterwards that's October 1st, 2nd and 3rd and then uh, is it the 8th, 9th, 10th? Yes, the conference will be the 8th, 9th and 10th the seminar to learn how to do the work is October 1, 2, and 3. You do not have to have learned reconnective healing to come to the conference. You're welcome to come anyway, but you might want to come and learn reconnective healing first because once you're at the conference and you see all of the research as to what we can facilitate in healing when we transcend our energy healing techniques, you'll have to wait a long time until we're back here in <laughs> Los Angeles again. It'll be another year, but you can always jump on a plane, find us on the reconnection.com on the schedule, and see what part of the world we're in and come there. Oh, by the way, the conference this year will be translated. It will have simultaneous translation 
into Spanish wow. um, as we do with uh, with our Mexico seminars and our South America and Spain seminars. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, yes, you can be found somewhere in some part of the world at some point uh, throughout the year, but uh, it's always yeah, a pleasure. Yeah, there's only a couple more seminars in the U.S. There'll be Miami coming up this year. We'll also have one in Buenos Aires, and there'll be one in Philadelphia. I think that might be all of the ones left this year for the U.S. I'm and, not sure. It's on the schedule. This year being 2010. So right. uh, with that, it's always a pleasure and always a lot of fun, and I look forward to seeing you this weekend. I hope you rest up. I, although I know your schedule is busy this week, I, I do hope you rest up. I plan on it. I'll be dreaming of elephants. <laughs> okay. All right, Eric. Thank you so much for being on the show with us tonight. That's an India reference in case people are going, what? What the heck does that mean? Yes, because yes. he just got back from India, and he was yeah, so Yeah, boy, is my tusk tired. I know. <laughs> Aha, boom, boom. And that is Dr. Eric Pearl in all his funniness and graciousness and brilliance, and we appreciate having him on the show. So with that, I'd like to introduce our next segment, which is Change Yourself, Change the World, led by our very own Dorothy Lee Donahue. Hi. I was in the desert last Tuesday night, sitting under the stars, surrounded by loving family and friends, and thinking about the moment that my life changed for the better. It was over 25 years ago, and I was sitting in Huntington Beach, California, in the Science of Mind Church, when the amazing Reverend Peggy Bassett said that each of us are the power in our world. And she went on to say that we are the co-creators of our lives and that tomorrow is what we believe, think, feel, say, and do today. She also said that most of us are co-creating from a very unconscious place and that we are co-creating from a place of reaction, a place of fear, rather than from a place of love and response. Unlike many in the audience, I believed her instantly and became very excited about my future. I thought that if I had created all of the chaos that had been my life up until that point, what wonderful things I could create if I chose to become conscious. So I began to make more elegant choices immediately. One of the most elegant choices I made was to read the book she recommended, Man's Search for Meaning, written by Holocaust survivor and famed psychoanalyst Viktor Frankl. One of the many things that I learned from the book was that I had a blessed life compared to his we all have. He also taught me that we have the power to choose attitudes in every circumstance. Victor lost everyone in his family, except for his sister, his mother, his father, his children. All of his relatives were brutally murdered by the Nazis. In sharing his experiences in the concentration camps, Victor Frankl said, Everything can be taken from man except the last of the human freedoms. His ability to choose his own attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose his own way. Between stimulus and response, there is a space, and that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth, and our freedom. To this day, I remain grateful to Victor for reminding me that nobody can make us mad. We choose anger. Nobody, nothing can make us happy. We choose to be happy or not in spite of what is going on around us. When we're feeling overwhelmed by circumstances, it's always helpful for us to remember that we do indeed have a choice to respond from a place of love or to react from a place of fear. For most of my life, I was a reactor. And even though I learned a lot from Victor's book, 
Those many years ago, when it came to my son and to some other family members, I was still a major reactor. Some would even say a nuclear reactor. When we love someone, we often love them the way our parents taught us what love looks like. I have observed from my own special reactionships with my parents, siblings, relatives, and friends that love looked a lot like yelling and carrying on in most unrefined ways, often saying some awful things to the ones we love the most, judging and criticizing them and telling them things that they should and shouldn't be doing, as if we know exactly what they should be doing and how they should be behaving. I understand now that we do this because we want them to make what we believe are better choices for them and because we're afraid for them. A much better choice for us and for them would be to lovingly say something like, you are much too intelligent to continue to make such choices as this. How can I help you see this? Is there something I can do to help you? Or maybe we could say, let's find a way to change this behavior if you are ready or want to change it. I have learned that the truth is that we cannot change anyone except ourselves. We absolutely cannot. It is impossible. I have learned this after years of trying to change everyone but me. Thank God that I finally did learn it, and my life now consists of many beautiful, loving relationships instead of the many hurtful reactionships that it was comprised of for so very long. I now know what it is to be a best friend, not only to the ones I love, but to me as well. I choose to be in response rather than in reaction, and I choose to be my best friend as well as the best friend to everyone I know. A best friend is one who brings out the best that is within us. Our best friends are those who do more than simply love us. They also believe in us. They support us, but occasionally they nudge us as well to become the best that we can be. An unknown author put it this way, a friend is someone who knows you as you are, understands where you've been, accepts who you've become, and still gently invites you to grow. And the best friend does all of this from the place of unconditional love. The best thing we can ever do is to first choose to love ourselves as friends. And remember what the Dalai Lama said, We should try never to let our happy frame of mind be disturbed, whether we are suffering at present or have suffered in the past. There is no reason to be unhappy. If we can remedy it, why be unhappy? And if we cannot, what use is there in being depressed about it? That just adds more unhappiness and does no good at all. Until next week, please remember that you are the power in your world. You are the guru you've been waiting and looking for. You are the only one who can end your suffering. And you can do this by beginning a love affair with you. Let us all choose to become very conscious co-creators by making the most elegant choices possible. And let us never forget that we are powerful beyond measure and that we are love We are lovable, and we are loved. I love that. Thank you, Dorothy Lee Donahue, with Change Yourself, Change Your World. And with that, we bring to a close another segment of Life Changes with Filippo. It is unbelievable how quickly the time goes, especially when you're talking to guests like Dr. Eric Pearl, whom we're grateful that was on the show tonight. Um, And remember that we have Doug DeVito and Dr. William Tiller on next week so we can continue the conversation about the science behind all of this. So we look forward to that. Remember to keep the conversation going during the week by visiting at all the touch points that that we have mentioned in the past and that you can um, find at our website. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ionways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles. 
To learn more about them, visit our sponsor page on our website and click on their links. I want to send a special thank you to Ken Sheets of Buzz Bros for putting us up on Facebook, which was a really pleasant surprise. So thank you for doing that. I am Filippo Voltaggio, and it has been my pleasure being of service by hosting Life Changes with Filippo today. I, along with our segment hosts, Dorothy Lee Donahue, and producers, Dorothy Lee Donahue and Mark M. Lejour, and our engineer, Seth Hendrick, thank you for joining us and being part of this world, part of this show, and being part of the change we all wish to see in the world. Ciao, everyone. You have been listening to Life Changes with the Master of Change, Filippo Voltaggio. Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and visit us on the web at www.lifechanges.ws. Also, you can follow our community on Facebook at Life Changes. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, Life Changes.